Ladies and gentlemen of an expanding universe, most of us here in this room and a huge majority of those beyond were born not too many decades ago. As time travelers, we are those whose length of journey is closer to commencement than culmination. I bring up the context of youth because at this conclave, we sit here to debate a new beginning, the powering up of a brand new decade. We gather to combine our great expectations to bear fruit on what is yet to unfold. In the passing of our days, when we glance beyond our own reflection, we see the faces that stare back. We are aware of bodies occupying co-current space. We influence and are in turn influenced by those lives predominantly nascent in fruition. And in our combined youth, we believe either in hope or in our capacity to deliver change. In the first instance, it is to my mind a reflection of idealism, and in the second, it is reality, the exact moment of shift being non-specific. But I feel it is practical maturity that bridges hope and action, that forms the flyway between idealism and reality, and the outcome is the certainty of today. Ladies and gentlemen, never in the history of the world have so many of us had a say in the future that we wish to build. Never before has reality been forged to this extent on the anvil of youth. Never has idealism been as clearly defined as is being done by the millions who now rise to occupy the future. There is debate over whether the youth of today is impatient for change, whether the assertive motion of young people all over the world are movements bereft of romanticism. To debate the issue, we have assembled today a highly representative youth panel from the fields of arts, sports, economics and politics. The first speaker is one of the most dynamic youth leaders of his generation, a second term Congress MP from Rohtak in Haryana. He has already made a mark as an articulate parliamentarian and politician. He is the third generation in the Lok Sabha from a family with a rich political heritage. His father is the Chief Minister of Haryana and his grandfather was a freedom fighter and a member of the Constituent Assembly. He is actively involved in the modernization of the Youth Congress undertaken by Rahul Gandhi. Who better to take on the challenge of idealism versus reality? Dipinder Singh Huda, idealism is to have the brightest young man's in the minds in the country enter the field of politics and play a role in governing India. Reality is that a majority of the young MPs in our country today come from political families. Is our political system such that no man, no young man without political connections can afford to be idealistic? Well, Rahul asked a very appropriate question. Before I get to answering that, I just want to take us all back to exactly about a hundred years. About a hundred years back, in a very small village in Bengal, Rabindranath Tagore inked these famous words, and this perhaps is the only prepared part of my speech. Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, into that heaven of freedom, O oh my father, let my country awake, let my country awake. A hundred years back, the young generation then had ideals. They were inspired by their idealism. In our country, they were also united and integrated by idea, one idea of where they want to take their nation. They differed on how to achieve that idea. Some professed non-violence, other violence. Some wanted to do it through revolution, the other, other ones wanted evolution. But the ideal of free India, India ruled, governed, led by Indians, was something which united everybody. They achieved that change within their lifetime. They strived for that, those ideals and they achieved those, that change. In the last hundred years, the world has changed. The world has seen the communist revolution in Russia and a revolution against it. The Berlin Wall has been erected and erased. The world has seen Cold War and end of Cold War. The world has seen India come into being, India divided, and now the world has seen emergence of India. The question that Rahul puts, do we, in our generation, 
the young generation today, 100 years after the young generation of our grandfathers and great-grandfathers, do we also have ideals? What are our ideals? Or is the age of idealism dead, like he said towards the end? To those who say that the age of idealism is dead, I say, till the time young breathe, they will dream. They will dream the impossible. Till the time the young breathe, they will attempt the impossible. And till the time the young breathe, they will achieve the impossible. We just have to believe in our young. Today, the difference from last hundred years might be that we might not be as united in our ideals, as united in our idealism as they were. My idea of how, where India needs to go ahead might be different from the idea that MNS might have, Raj Thakre might have. But we are all entitled to these ideals. We, in politics, in art, in sports, all of us have our own ideals. Today, I just wanted to share with you a couple of political ideals that I have, that I, that drive me, that I strive, try for. I will begin by pointing out the first. I want to believe in India. I want to believe in an India where divisive politics comprehensively gives way to progressive politics. What do I mean by that? Where there is no, no scope whatsoever for political debate centered on caste, religion, region, where what's important in a political discourse, what's important in the political debate of our country is development, progressive policies, how and why and how much is each step making impact on the future of our country. I want to believe in in India where separation between politics and all these divisive factors caste, religion, region I repeat again I want to believe in an India where separation between politics and all these divisive factors is absolute we can dream that today that's the ideal that drives me we ought to be talking more about things like water when we in 1947 when we gained our independence. The per capita water availability in India was 5,000 cubic meters. Today it's 2,000. 2020, when the average age of Indian would be 29 years old, it will be about 1,500 cubic meters. I want to see that debated more rather than which caste will get SC status, ST status, OBC status, which reservation come, because water is going to be the same for everybody. I, wanted, I want to see education and skill sets debated in our country. Today, more than 50%, nearly 55% of our country, the younger generation of our country. We've been, you know, in Parliament, I used to go and watch the proceeding of, my pal of the Parliament when my grandfather was a MP for many years, then when my father was an MP for many years. And, you know, in every other debate, I used to hear the same cliches, ki kisan ke liye karna hai, kisan ke liye wo karna hai. Aaj hume is baat ki zarurat hai, कि हम ये भी सोचें कि किसान के बेटे के लिए क्या करना है 60% of our young generation is still tied to agriculture if we see any economy that has progressed starting from china all the way to united states the percentage of population that depends on agriculture keeps on shrinking are we prepared for it these 60% of people most of whom will be in their young age in the, uh, the next decade Will they have skill sets to make that transition, to go into manufacturing services? Will they find opportunities to pursue their life elsewhere? That's what I want to see debated in this country more than religion, caste, quotas, tokenism. I want to see infrastructure debated in this country more. We have grown up in a country full of shortages. We have grown up in a country full of traffic jams, queues. The young generation is not ready to accept it anymore. I don't want to leave it for the next generation to see an India without shortages, without traffic jams, with no queues. I want to make that, make sure that happens in my generation. That's the ideal that drives me. Broadly, this was the first ideal that I wanted to talk to you about. The change, the shift from divisive nature of our politics to more progressive nature of our politics. That's the ideal that drives me and that's what I would change that I want to bring. Second, and that's the last ideal that I'll talk about. And this is exactly going, uh, going back to what Rahul said. I 
want to believe in my India, which gives equal opportunity for each and every kid and children to pursue their dream. Each and every kid of this country should have equal opportunity to become they want to become, to get they want to want if they put their mind and heart to it. Irrespective of if that kid is born to a different caste or a different family or different religion or that kid is born in Delhi versus a remote village in Rajasthan or if that kid is uh, educated in English medium school in Delhi versus a Hindi medium school or Tamil medium school in some remote village in Tamil Nadu. Each and every kid of this country should have equal opportunity, including equal opportunity in politics, mind you. The surname should not matter. I am here today because of my surname, maybe. I am product of that system. But that system needs to change. And I, that's the ideal that I have. When I contested my first elections, when I, when I contested my first elections, I remember, this was about six years back, nobody knew me. I was just a bloke who, uh, you know, happened to work in Infosys, McKinsey for a few years and, you know, just gotten back from states and was trying his hands out at politics. The only qualification I had was my great-grandfather, grandfather, father had been in politics for long years. People elected me. But then, over the course of next five years, I worked hard. And when I went back to people, and I say to my constituents even today, that you don't need to vote for me because of my surname. You vote for me only if you find that what I have done, what I believe in, and you believe in uh, that too. And I think that is what, uh, to Rahul's point, I think one person who has recognized this more than anybody else in Indian politics today is Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi ji has recognized this, and not only has he recognized this, what the change that we have seen, we are seeing in Indian Youth Congress. He is trying to throw the doors of an open of Indian politics to all the youth, to give them equal opportunity. If they want to contribute to the nation building, they can become members of Youth Congress, and then they can contest elections. And on their own merit, not because of nomination, not because of recommendation from a senior leader, but on their own merit, if they get votes, they will be guaranteed success and they will be guaranteed, guaranteed to move, move ahead. That's why I was given an opportunity to associate with myself with this process in Mumbai recently. When Rao Ji recently took a trip to Mumbai and I saw young people from all walks of life who had no hope to be in Indian politics, who had no lineage, no connections, coming forward, becoming members, and contesting, and some of like this, this whole process, which I call a silent revolution, that very few of us know about today, is throwing up a new breed of politicians, new breed of young politicians throughout our country, a new breed of leaders who are ready to lead our country into the, into the future. So I think I, in the end, would leave you with this thought. I believe in these two ideals, and I strive towards these two ideals. The question is, everybody here, especially the young, what are the ideals you believe in? What are, the what are the changes that you want to see in our nation as we move forward? Where do you want to see our nation progress? Because change cannot wait for some other time. Change cannot wait for somebody else. Change is you at this time, in this hall. Thank you.